Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Organisms and Populations and today we are learning Population Interactions. We know in this ecosystem all living organisms interact with the, their abiotic factors as well as biotic factors. We learn the influence of abiotic factors and the responses and adaptations shown by the organisms to them. Now we will discuss the, how they are interacting with their other species. We know in a given habitat, in a natural habitat, there is not habitat with a single species. There will be more than one species without which life is not possible. So every species knowingly or unknowingly interact with each other. So interaction between two species is called a interspecific interactions. So suppose human beings, we are a species, we interact with a plant species. For our food, we depend on them. So that is actually a kind of interspecific interaction. So this can be classified into various categories. So in that, when you consider two species, sometimes the interaction is in such a way that both the species are benefited. Then beneficial effect we can give a plus sign. There are cases, uh, for example, a condition called a mutualism. In mutualism, both are living in harmony. That means uh, we have learned in social science that about barter system, people give and take relationship. So that is mutualism. Both are benefited. You are doing a favor for me, I am doing another one for you. Okay, so that is called a mutualism. Whereas another interaction is called a competition. When a competition exists between two individuals or two species, it is actually um, not good for both of them. Such effect is called a detrimental effect. So detrimental effect can be represented as minus. So in competition, both are minus. Now coming to another interaction called a predation, where one organism is eating the other one, like food chain we know, eating the other. So there, the one which is eating, that is the predator is getting benefited. So plus for predator. But what about the prey? Minus. Its life is, uh, it has to sacrifice its life, right? So that is minus. Whereas when it comes to parasitism, a parasite is living on the body of a host and deriving nutrition free of cost. So it's absolutely plus for it. Whereas for the host it is minus because it is harming it and take depriving it of the nutrients and it will get affected by the infection and all. So that is minus. So plus and minus. Now there is another situation called a commensalism. In commensalism it's like a kind of uh, doing help to others or a helping mentality we can say that is I am helping uh, someone without expecting anything back okay so when I am giving a help to other I am neither gaining nor losing anything so zero I can consider for me neutral whereas the one who is receiving the help getting benefited that is plus so that is common cellism. now coming to the last type that is called a cellism. it is kind of sadism I am not gaining anything but still I make sure that I am troubling someone else. So it's neutral for me and neither gaining nor losing so zero for me. But at the same time for another species I am causing harm so negative for it. That is called a amensalism. So now let us discuss one by one. Uh, among all these interspecific interactions in predation, parasitism and commensalism the interacting species live close together. Let us start with the predation. When you learn interactions, examples are very important. So you have to learn them with a special attention. Okay. So first one is predation. We know in predation, one organism is eating the other as its food. So there one is benefited, the other one is detrimental, that is minus. In uh, predation, when we think about, the first thing would be coming to our mind is the uh, tiger chasing a deer that we watch on television, right? But it, that is not the only predation. Suppose if you are seeing a, a cattle is grazing on the uh, grass, we don't feel that it is predation because a poor animal, cow, cow or goat, we consider they are herbivores, they are poor or a rabbit eating a carrot. We don't get a predation feeling but that's also a kind of predation. One species is eating the other one. So what are the roles of predators that they play in the nature? It is a very important three mark question. Okay, so there are three roles predators play in our nature. First one, they act as conduits for energy transfer. 
means only by eating one organism energy will flow from that trophic level to the next when this is eaten by another one then energy flow will happen so if one organism is not eating the other flow of energy is not happening across the trophic level so it acts as a conduit for energy flow that's the number one point second keep prey population under control suppose predator is not there the prey population will multiply to a larger extent if you take a very simple example of a food chain that is grass rabbit and a tiger if we remove all the tigers what happens to rabbit population they increase uh, we are taking a situation where no other species is there okay so the rabbit population will increase in their number so initially it is good for them because there is no predator but over a period of time what happens the rabbit population will also decline because there will occur a competition for the food because their number is more so that competition will lead to their death also producers also will suffer because they are they are fully eaten by the plant so the balance is also lost so here the example is that of prickly pear cactus so in 1920 prickly pear cactus were introduced into australia so whenever we are introducing a particular species that is called a alien species okay an alien species introduced into a new habitat its natural predator is missing in that habitat so when prickly pear cactus was introduced in australia it created a havoc by spreading because in the absence of the natural predator nobody is there to check their growth so later to control them they had to introduce their natural predator that is cactus feeding moth from the original habitat okay so this is a classical example of predator keeping prey population under control another point or the important or significance of predation is maintain species diversity of prey population one particular predator may be feeding on different uh, species below it in the trophic level right it need not be feeding on only one like tiger can feed on rabbit or deer or any other organism so like that there is a variety of uh, prey population under their control so if they are not eating them this prey population will increase in their number and there will be competition among themselves and they will also die this was proven by field experiment rocky intertidal communities of american pacific coast they actually in a field experiment removed all the pisaster starfish which used to feed on other invertebrate species so within one year they found that in the absence of this particular predator 10 other invertebrate species became extinct what was the reason for that in the absence of a check or a predator they had competition among themselves and they also died so their presence is important to check them under control when predation is detrimental for the prey prey population also will have to develop certain adaptations to overcome this pressure from the predation so different organisms have developed different means of defense first of all insects and frogs they are cryptically colored or camouflaged to escape from their predators or some uh, organisms are poisonous so it cannot be eaten by the predator and uh, some are distasteful for example monarch butterfly its predators are birds but birds cannot eat them because of the uh, distaste why they are developing this uh, unpleasant taste because during larval stage they feed on certain chemicals which will give them this unpleasant taste actually it is acting as a defense for them in later life when we talk about plants we know herbivores are the main predators of plants apart from this 25 percent of insects are also phytophagus you know what is phytophagus means sucking the sap of the plant so that they are also predators but for plants the situation is even worse than animals because animals when they are chased by the predator they can at least run away but plants have no option so they have more varieties of defense mechanisms first one is the development of thorns plants like cactus acacia and all have thorns in them which actually help them to uh, protect themselves against the predation then uh, there are certain plants producing chemicals various kinds of chemicals to defend themselves for example calotropis calotropis is a plant which is having a chemical which can make the animal feeding on it uh, sick that is it contains a cardiac glycoside so because of that even though it is growing in the abandoned land we will not find any cattle or a goat grazing on them because most of these chemicals can uh, feed uh, inhibit the digestion or the feeding habit of, of that animal or it can impair with the reproductive ability or sometimes these many plants have secondary metabolites we learned about secondary metabolites in class 11 so they produce these chemicals for their 
defense. We have many use based on these chemicals, but still they are producing it for the defense mechanism. For example, nicotine present in the tobacco or caffeine in the coffee plant or quinine from Sincona office analysis is actually a medicine for malaria, strychnine, opium, etc. that we use commercially, but these are all helping the plants to get rid of the predation pressure. So these are the points that you have to remember under the heading of our interspecific interaction predation. So hope you understood the concepts well. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.